I don't know if CES is like this every year, but goodness, it was so good. What's up tech, it's Josh here, and this was my first time at CES, and I must say it was a great first impression. I definitely have plans to go back next year. Long story short, what even got me there was a brand reaching out to Bain Tech to potentially work with them on some promotional type material, and then they discovered that I have a video production company, and they're like, okay, yeah, let's work out a deal. So we did, got there, got to work with them. On top of being able to collaborate with Matt Gray to work on some of our own content for our channels, but also with this video production. All around, a win-win for everybody. Obviously, CES is just full of cool tech, lots of cool booths and exhibits to check out. But for me personally, there was a few experiences that were not even part of a booth that I appreciated the most. First of all, Andrew Edwards invited tech YouTubers to a dinner put on by YouTube Creator Collective, and it was a fantastic dinner. So that was cool in itself. Multi-courses, it was one of the best dinners I've ever had. I tried everything. Some stuff was, I want to do it again, <laughs> but most of it was fantastic. And the chef was amazing. I love how he takes pride in what they do. He compared that to what we do as creators, and that was just a really cool way to bridge a gap between the food industry and tech. We all take pride in what we do. At the dinner, I got to meet some familiar faces, ones I've met years ago, like back in the Honor 8 days when I got to go to San Francisco, and some other events that I've been able to go to, such as Camp Pixel. And then I got to meet some people that I've been following for so many years at this point and put a face to the name. Uh, I love and appreciate those kind of events, and I sincerely am grateful to have that kind of opportunity. Another opportunity that came across was sitting down with Nomad having coffee, talking about some of their upcoming products that they got coming out this year. Nomad is a brand that has been around since the beginning of the channel. One of the first brands I've ever been able to work with and they've been sticking out with me for all this time. So being able to sit down with them face to face was amazing. And on top of that coffee discussion, later that night was a happy hour where more Nomad related circles was there and I was able to actually meet Matt from Peak Design. I love Peak Design. I, I use their cases, I got their bag. Uh, tons of products like their straps. So really big fan of both brands, Nomad and Peak Design, and being able to talk to the ones I've been emailing back and forth, like I don't know how many years at this point, was super cool to me. The last experience I wanna to touch on before I get into the actual booths that I visited was the Android experience. I got an email notification from Team Pixel saying, hey, we're gonna have a huge setup out there. Go check it out. If you check it out, you know, tag us online and all that kind of fun stuff. It was really cool. They had this huge Android bug that you could take selfies with or just enjoy. But the other cool thing was you could scan a QR code and you got this AR experience with an Android bug skating around the CES buildings, doing tricks, flipping around, doing just fun stuff like that. So it was a really cool experience, an Android experience. On top of that, you could visit different little sections to where you could learn more about their products, some of the different features that you could take advantage of, and just learn more about what Pixel can do. Okay, now for the roundup. There's some pretty cool stuff. If you've never been to CES or if you've followed any of the stuff that anybody else posts, you will come to know that there's just so much. There's no way to ever take in every single thing. So you really have to just be strategic and go to the different spots that you wanna to go to. But we tried to, me and Matt, like we teamed up, we walked together, went to different booths. We're like, okay, we're gonna go check out Samsung, we're gonna go check out LG, so on and so forth. But it's like, if you're a techie, if you're a nerd or a geek, whatever, it's like you're walking by all this cool stuff. It's like, that's really cool, that's really cool. I gotta stop here and check this out. And that's what it was like. So like we did try to check out some of the places that we wanted to go, but along the way, just some really cool stuff. One of the first distractions was drone soccer. This was like a mix between Rocket League and the Harry Potter game Quidditch. Matt actually described that the best, so I'm gonna give him the credit for that description. And it was pretty much just like that. It was really cool. So you basically got these two big donuts or tubes that that's how they score. So you got an attacker that's got to go through the tube and you got defenders trying to keep them out. You got two different teams, they're flying all over the place. There's a drone that's surrounded by a bubble. It really reminded me of one of those toys that you used to get. It was like the drones that you kind of toss up in the air, just bounce around, not damage anything, really lightweight. 
It was a lot bigger version of that. It looks super fun. I really could see it as a small business opportunity in towns almost of any size. I think a lot of people would have a lot of fun. Now, the brand that we worked with was Tal or Xerxy, and I'll leave a link to some of the stuff about that, but I wanna get into like a booth that we kept on passing by for a couple days, and I know me and my wife, we were just like, uh, we've gotta check that out when we get some free time. It's called Prinker. It's a temporary tattoo printer that you basically load up a design on the device and you print it out on your skin. It's pretty cool. Like I can see this really being used for different kind of events, special occasions, birthday parties. But one of the practical ways that I saw this was on their demo video that they had playing. I saw them print their participant numbers on their skin versus having that paper that they normally pin to their clothing. So I thought that was actually a really cool practical way that this could be used along with just having some fun with it, of course. Pretty close spot to that booth was Meepo, and that's actually a booth that I kind of had to do a double take. I was like, was that boosted board like reborn? <laughs> there was a board that was off-road. It looked really cool, awesome, fun. That was probably the board that caught our attention the most. It, uh, Matt took it for a ride. He was riding that around. I was like, all right, bro, get some footage of that, but I'm gonna go check out Prinker, and that's kind of like where that landed. It, like I said, it's you're walking by all this stuff and you're like, I wanna see that, I wanna see that. That was in the Venetian Expo Hall and lots of cool stuff there. But we definitely wanted to go over to the main hall and that's where some brands that we wanted to check out potentially connect with. TCL was one of the first ones that we saw and what caught my attention the most was this massive 115 inch 4K mini LED TV. It was so impressive. The thing was, one, it was big. You could see the context with Matt. Like, obviously it's up on a pedestal, but you could kind of see how just really big this thing was. I was just impressed with how clear and clean that the images looked. The kicker is that it's gonna be released sometime later this year, but guess what the price is? $20,000. I don't think I've ever walked into a store and seen that much for a TV. Little sidetrack note is that I'm about to start remodeling renovating a new studio space. And I would absolutely, I can't imagine having that thing in my new studio. That, it would be sick. Like the, the client experience, being able to see their videos that I created for them on that huge big screen, that would be pretty sick. TCL, it was one of those just massive areas where you could really hang out and spend a lot of time there. There was other TVs. Matt sat down next to the gaming section and was playing some games on that. So they got monitors, TVs, gaming monitors, and gaming TVs to be more specific, but they also have some pretty cool stuff that I actually was kind of impressed with, and I could see it being kind of practical and fun to use, which was their Nextwear glasses. They had this connected to an Xbox that was playing some FIFA soccer. I'm no good at soccer. I'm not any good at the FIFA game at all either, but being able to put those on, playing the game, it's like no matter where you turn your head, you're seeing the game, so it's like it felt like you're in the action just a little bit more. But the more practical use that I saw for this was just being able to portably use this almost anywhere. Like you could take the, the glasses and enjoy videos, other games. You know, Apple Vision is about to be dropped. And obviously that's a, a product in its own, but I really see some of these different kind of products like these different smart glasses come out that's gonna be just fun to use. But the other thing that was extremely cool and you kind of saw it in, I don't know, so many different areas was automated autonomous vehicles. The one that caught my eye the most, well, I say the most, I guess the one that actually means more to me was Mobileye. And they were using a Volkswagen ID bus. I keep on saying bus, buzz. The reason I say that is because for about a year and a half, up until like literally about a week ago, I sold a 1976 Volkswagen Westphalia bus. Yeah, I love the thing. Long story short, we sold that so we could use that fund to our new studio that we're renovating. But anyways, I, I love the Volkswagen bus. Like it's such a cool vehicle to me. And they got the new one that's coming out, the ID Buzz. And I'm actually, I've had my eye on that ever since I've seen the announcement. But they had one there with all of Mobileye's technology and just some really cool, fun stuff. I'm getting more interested into EVs and I don't know, maybe the, this particular one might be my first EV. I'm not sure when, I'm, I know at some point I'll have an EV, but I'm not sure if it's gonna be like, I used to be like a Tesla fan, but then I was like the Ford Lightning, that was pretty cool and practical. But then like the ID Buzz, that sounds pretty cool too. But the Mobileye 
incorporates some really cool technology and might actually put some concerns to ease because of the different safety features that are incorporated with Mobileye. Like there's tons of cameras around, it detects uh, safety hazards and all that kind of stuff that you might be concerned about if you're gonna let a car take over driving. A showstopper was definitely a Fila by Sony. And the reason why it's a showstopper is because when they announced this thing, when they were talking about it, showing it off, they drove it out with the PlayStation controller. Now, if that's not the coolest remote control car that you've ever heard of, I don't know what will be. That was super cool. I also like the nod to the PlayStation color gray. It's not necessarily the color I would choose if I got that vehicle, but I do appreciate the fact that they kind of have that nice kind of color scheme going with it. There were two different models that you take a look at. I saw some people actually in the cars. That was cool. I didn't take the time to try to see if I could get in one. But there was also a simulator that you could try out and kind of gave you some demonstrations of how the car drives, the different technology that you could take advantage of. Really cool booth. If you're at CES and see that kind of thing, just take some time, learn about it. Very informational stuff. We were walking along, saw a high end days demonstration, and this thing was a huge, looked like something at a Terminator, automated excavator. Blippi fans out there, you would probably go nuts. I would actually love to see Blippi do a whole presentation about this whole vehicle, because it would, it would be pretty entertaining, and I'm sure all the kids out there would absolutely love this thing. What I'm actually curious about is like, if there's anybody in the construction industry what are your thoughts on this kind of gear and equipment? Is this something that you could see being used in your future endeavors as a construction worker, or are there some complications that go along with that? Being that this channel is heavy on the smartphone stuff, I had to stop by Motorola's when we were walking by. I got into the foldable stuff last year. I'm somewhat late to the game, but at the same time, you know, that's a hefty price tag. Like those phones are not cheap at all. Close to 2000 bucks. It's not a easy investment to, to take a look at. Anyways, I went with the Google Pixel Fold and I also used the Samsung Fold 5. Those were like those full foldable devices. I didn't get any of the flip styles. This year though, when the new flip styles come out, I think that's the direction I'm gonna try this time. I can't do both. I ain't that rich, but anyways, I was really impressed with the Razer. I, I thought it was like the size, the aesthetics, the build quality, how thin it was, the screen looked really good. It would definitely take some, obviously more using than just picking up from a, a booth. So sometime down in the future when the new stuff is announced, um, I'm hoping to be able to acquire those. I remember having the old school Motorola Razer back in the day. That was one of the coolest phones when they came out. Just for nostalgic purposes, I think it'd be fun to check out the Motorola Razer is it Moto now? Or is it just, how do they say it, Motorola? I mean, goodness, like there was so much to do at CES. My biggest regret was not arriving on Sunday so I could check out the media day on Monday where there's just a ton of announcements, some different activities to take part of. I really hope to be able to do that kind of stuff next year. I was super grateful and thankful for the opportunity to be able to go and have a good time, meet some other creators, and just get the first time CES experience under my belt. I can't wait to go back. If I do go back, what's the kind of stuff that you want me to cover and get my opinions about? Let me know down in the comments and I appreciate you sticking around watching this video. If you liked it, please give a thumbs up and share it with somebody. It means a lot to me. Also, I had a discussion. For those that have been around my channel for a while, you knew that for the longest time, I wore a red Boston Red Sox hat. Um, full transparency, I got a little thicker, so I grew out of that hat. That's why I haven't seen the red hat as much, or at all at this point. I wear different ones like this one. Should I go back to, the, like, buy a new Boston Red Sox hat? I thought about making just a red Baintech themed hat and uh, stick out the red hat theme again. What's your thoughts? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching again. Catch you next time.